Hey guys, it's Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel. We have some exciting things happening in the kitchen for part six. In this video, appliances will be installed. I'm adding some wood detailing to the kitchen peninsula, and then the countertops are finally being installed. If you missed any of the other kitchen renovation videos, I linked them in the description below, and you can also find the kitchen renovation playlist on my channel homepage. Unfortunately, my dad and Tucker had to get back up to work in Wisconsin, so it's just Devin and I from here on out. We definitely couldn't have made it this far without my dad's help, so big thanks to him for taking the time to help and teach us all. Check out the description below for any important links and let's get started. First off, we're installing our microwave. We decided to go with this under counter microwave drawer from KitchenAid. It was definitely a bit of a splurge, but we wanted to save on countertop space and this microwave worked perfectly with our new layout. This is a 24 inch microwave and we were able to put it in our 24 inch Ikea cabinet. We adjusted the middle shelf in order to fit the microwave leveled it, and then secured the microwave to the face of the cabinet with the screws provided. When I'm ready, I'll attack the words, give it everything I've got. But what's left is fool's gold, there's more that it's not. It ain't nothing but a pretty color, and even that could be. Next, we're installing the oven, which is also from KitchenAid. This is the 30 inch five element electric slide in range. We set it in place and plugged it in for now so we can use it, but we'll have to remove it while they install countertops. We've been using this oven for about a week or so now and we love it so far. This oven has a baking drawer, steam rack, and five cooking elements, including a warm zone. If you didn't know, KitchenAid has a military and healthcare worker discount program where they offer a 10% discount. This is a great deal to take advantage of if you qualify, especially on these large expensive appliances. You just have to create an account and get your info verified on their website. Before installing the dishwasher, we needed to install a little filler piece. We'll be attaching a piece of face trim to this panel later on. We were extremely fortunate to partner with Hisense and they gifted us this dishwasher as well as the refrigerator for our kitchen renovation. This Hisense built-in dishwasher combines ultra quiet 47 decibel operation with exceptional cleaning and drying performance. It has a 15 minute quick wash cycle which cleans a light load very fast and their sensor cleaning technology adjusts the time needed for the perfect clean every time. A few other features I thought were cool is that it has a leak detection system which helps protect floors by stopping leaks. It also has automatic door open which improves drying by letting steam escape and a condensation drying system which lets you load plastic items anywhere. You can find this dishwasher exclusively at Lowe's. I provided a link in the description below. Last but not least, we have this beautiful French door refrigerator, also from Hisense. I custom built the fridge surround to perfectly fit our fridge. I'll share more about this build process in the next video. To the right of the fridge, I'm also building a custom pantry, so I'll share more about that in the next video as well. This fridge features two humidity controlled fruit and vegetable crisper drawers full width pantry drawer for storing large items, anti-fingerprint stainless steel which resists fingerprints and makes cleaning super easy, no special cleaners are required, convenient internal water dispenser for filtered water anytime. Also, it provides up to three pounds of ice with easy freezer access. This French door refrigerator is also exclusively at Lowe's. You can check it out through the link in the description.
before countertops go in, we have to finish this last end cabinet. We made this small bookshelf out of three quarter inch plywood for cookbooks. Once it's installed, we'll paint it and add some face trim to finish it off. I made sure it was nice and level and square and then secured it to the cabinet. I installed a USB outlet to the end of the island and now I'm removing all of the outlet screws so I can get the island prepped for the wood paneling. I ordered two rolls of this pole wrap from Home Depot. This is a flexible wood treatment that is generally used to wrap round poles, but it comes in these big eight foot rolls and I'm going to secure it to the peninsula to give it a cool textured look. I'm still trying to decide if I want to paint it or stain it, but it's nice that you have the option to do either or leave it as it is. This was very easy to install. I just kept the pole wrap rolled up and cut it to height on my miter saw. I had to measure and cut out where my outlets were and I did that using a multi-tool. Once the outlet was cut out, I dry fit the piece to make sure it fit properly. Then I added some construction adhesive to the back side. Once the paneling was in place, I secured it with some brad nails. I have a pretty big gap where the wall meets my wood floors, so I will be adding some base trim later on. I found that if you secure the brad nails in the cracks of the paneling, they are completely hidden and you won't need to come back and fill any nail holes. I'll link the pull wrap in the description below. This is a super easy way to add a decorative accent to a wall or a piece of furniture.
I finished wrapping the peninsula just in time for the countertops. I went through Home Depot to order countertops. The process was super easy and I made sure to order the countertops when they had a good deal running. They always have different promotions on countertops so keep an eye on that if you're planning a reno or remodel anytime soon. We went with the Sile Stone Quartz countertops in Toscana Cream. I love the uniqueness of the colors and the veining and they accent our tile floors beautifully. We were able to go and approve the slabs in person before they were installed, which I thought was pretty cool. Once our base cabinets were installed, it took a week or so to have someone come out and take all the laser measurements. After they took those measurements, it was an additional two weeks before they were able to install. So make sure to factor in enough time for this whole process. The time frame is different everywhere but it definitely doesn't happen overnight. That is it for part six. Next week's video will be on the custom cabinetry above the fridge as well as the custom pantry. If you're in need of a pantry that doesn't take up a lot of space but has a lot of storage, this next video will be a great one to watch. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and following along. Thank you and we'll see you next week. <music>